Link Monsters were introduced to the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game on November 3rd, 2017 in the structure deck Cybers Link, with the very first Link Monster being Encode Talker. We're coming up on almost seven years since the introduction of Links, and I think it's well overdue that we go ahead and ruin the game again. Red Yu-Gi-Oh! cards have been an idea that players have tossed around even before Link Monsters, red being the color of choice completing the rainbow of Yu-Gi-Oh! card type colors. We're back to doing Konami's job for them, and today I'm diving headfirst into the cesspool with red Yu-Gi-Oh! cards. To preface the discussion, I don't believe that Konami will ever create a new main deck subtype of monster, or even back row for that matter. So red cards will be the newest addition to the extra deck. The long-standing trend for each new extra deck mechanic has been improving the ease of access to the monsters in the extra deck. Fusions required a fusion spell card and specific materials. Synchros ditched the spell card, requiring only monsters on field whose combined levels equaled that of the Synchro monster. But at least one of those monsters needed to be a Tuner, the newest addition to the main deck catalog at the time. Xyz dropped the requirement of a specific kind of monster and relied primarily on the levels of material monsters matching. And finally, Lynx dropped just about all of it for the most generic summoning requirement to date. Well, today we're basically gonna f around and find out. For red cards, I'm dropping summoning requirements entirely. Please! Please! Now! Now, hold on, walk this dog with me. Before we get into the example cards I've come up with, I want to defend the lack of summoning requirements. The red cards, and yes, that's how I'll be referring to them, I may be doing Konami's job, but I'm also not getting paid for the painstaking labor to be creative. Basically, Red monsters can be freely summoned from the extra deck to main monster zones. Red monsters still occupy space in the extra deck. So while you have immediate access to these monsters, you're also limiting the use of the remaining extra deck mechanics. But to also fight against my own case, this would only work if the size of the extra deck stays at 15 cards, which I strongly believe would be the case. And now that we've set the stage for disaster, let's look at some examples. Full disclaimer, I'm leaning fully into the theme of red. In early 2005, a bundle version of the Game Boy Advance title, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7 Trials to Glory World Championship Tournament 2005, debuted Kaiba Man as one of the three included promo cards. Needless to say, this card has become a fan favorite among the player base, but for nearly 20 years now, the player base has patiently awaited a Red Eyes counterpart. The wait is finally over. Joey Man is my first example of a red card, a level 3 dark warrior with 700 attack and 200 defense with the following effect. If you red summon this card, you can special summon one red eyes monster from your deck. Quick effect, you can banish this face up card you control, special summon one red eyes monster from your hand. You can only activate each effect of Joey Man once per turn. So the effects that I've come up with for my examples aren't necessarily important. Hopefully I garnered a few likes from the Red Eyes community, but it does raise the debate of how potent these cards can be before they become broken. With access to these cards being just shy of unlimited, akin to starting the duel with ultimate offering and infinite life points, we more than likely wouldn't see a new Baron de Flor or Apollosa adjacent effects with the red monsters. They can still be powerful, but they'd be more relative to the starters of an archetype. On the subject of archetypes, how about Synchrons? We're probably playing with fire with the idea of a free tuner, but summer's right around the corner. Ruby Synchron, a level three fire machine tuner monster, 1200 attack and 500 defense, with the following effect. You can reveal one synchro monster from your extra deck. Special summon one normal monster whose level combined with this card's level equals the level of the revealed synchro monster from your deck. Hopefully you weren't taking a shot every time I said level. You cannot special summon monsters from your extra deck until after you summon the revealed synchro monster. Yes, it's a one card synchro at no cost. I told you, we're gonna find out today. I do think the requirement of normal monsters aids in balancing the effect, having to hold on to a garnet or two that if the lore didn't favor you, you'll find both in your opening hand. Up to this point, we've played it safe with examples of monsters under level four. But what about the big boys? How about the original red card? Slife of the Sky Dragon was originally released as a non-tournament legal promo card in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Game Boy Advance title, 
Duel Monsters International Worldwide Edition, sporting the infamous red card frame and a unique red card back. Here is what's basically my retrain of Slifer the Sky Dragon as a red card. Slifer, Divine Dragon of Trembling Skies, a level 10 Divine, Divine Beast monster with question mark attack and defense, with the following effect. You can tribute this red summon card you control. Special summon one Slife of the Sky Dragon from your hand, deck, or graveyard. Then if you do, add one Thunder Force attack from your deck to your hand. If this card is in your graveyard, Slifer the Sky Dragon you control cannot be sent to the graveyard. You can only activate this effect of Slifer, Divine Dragon of Trembling Skies, once per turn. Of all examples, this is far and away the least likely that Konami would ever consider to be an idea for a red card. However, it does bring up the question of if there should be a level cap on red monsters. Dropping multiple free level 5 and higher monsters, even with worthless effects, sounds like we're asking for trouble when we remember everything else that dwells in the extra deck. Another idea that I had for the red monsters is to treat them as essentially a second normal summon, but from the extra deck. Meaning you can summon one red monster per turn and their level requires the same tribute as a normal summon from a main deck monster of the same level. This idea sucks and I've decided to ignore it. But what I'm not going to ignore is your thoughts ladies and gentlemen. Drop a comment down below using the criteria, what red monster would you create? or how would you design the mechanic of a red Yu-Gi-Oh card? If you liked the video, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up. It's always greatly appreciated, guys. And until next time, this has been Purple Pineapple TV, signing off.